Hello everybody, it's Nathaniel Avila reporting from Greater Orlando and I'm here joined with Timbrel Hildebrand reporting from Arlington, Texas. Hi Timbrel. Hi. Alright, and what are we talking about today? Talking about the good dinosaur. Oh my gosh, yay, the forgotten child. So, have you seen this film before? Um, I saw bits and pieces of it before, but I hadn't really, like, watched it. And, uh, uh, this is the first time you've seen the whole thing all the way through? Yes. Alright, what did you think of it? I liked it! I thought it was a nice movie. Me too. I think, like, a lot of people didn't really like it because they thought it was kind of derivative, I guess, because they said they spotted a lot of, like, parallels from The Lion King and a couple other Pixar films. So that and it also was like one I think it's the first Pixar flop that happened and they lost like eighty three million dollars on it. Oh god. Yeah. And and it came out it came out during a year when Pixar had like a took a break in twenty fourteen because they never released anything that year. So people were like waiting to see what they would release the uh, in twenty sixteen. Was it 20, in 2015, I mean. And and uh, this and that year, uh, Pixar released two films. This film and another film called Inside Out. So it kind of... Inside Out kind of very overshadowed this one uh, greatly. Yeah. So and the, like, there were some other issues people had with it, like... The animation was really good. Like you can see the the ocean and the trees and the and the the sky and the clouds and it looks like it looks like you're looking at real water and forest and all that kind of stuff. And then you see this cartoonish dinosaur walk in and kind of like jars you. Uh huh. So uh, would you agree with that statement? I didn't really feel, like, I mean, I guess I can kind of see where they're coming from, because the surroundings were very realistic, but I didn't feel like it was necessarily a problem with the cartoons. Okay, so it didn't bother you as much. It didn't take away from you. No, not to me. Yeah, I, I, it wasn't really a big deal to me either, uh, but those were some reasons why people didn't uh, go to see it. Uh, so some backstory of this film... Uh, I know that there were some production issues with this film. Uh, it was first con conceived by a guy named Bob Peterson and Peter Sun, who would eventually go on to direct the film. Uh, so the filmmakers said that they wanted to like make this new alternative history type things to explore what dinosaurs would be like if they weren't like extinct wiped out by the meteorite uh so that's what they really wanted to do so uh so that was the whole thing with that so it went through a couple of revisions like they wanted it to be like this epic society uh around this kind of like a zootopia type thing uh Except they, as it came, as it went on, they decided that it was that the environment was taking away from the story itself, and that the character of Arlo was kind of like fading away into the background, and they didn't want that, so they just took all of that out, and they decided that um, they decided to just make it like this Odyssey film uh, about a journey home with Arlo and his friend and uh, his human uh, friend Spot who acts more like a dog in this film but that was the whole thing and it went through several revisions and I think uh, the cast they recasted it a couple of times and they got different directors and the, people said that that was a bit of another reason why the film didn't perform as well as it could have Yeah, that's usually what uh, that, that usually is a big part. If you change directors, usually films tend to suffer from that. Mm -hmm. Another thing is like uh, Sun is a uh, 
was a first time director. He never made anything previous. I think he made one short, but that's about it. And if you would watch like these uh, behind the scenes, you can see like how nervous he was um, because he had to like uh, go up against like all these because he he had the he had to live up to the Pixar name. He had all these other stuff that was amazing. These amazing films, and he had to put out another amazing film. And it was very nerve wracking for him too because he was just a voice actor. Uh, he, I know he played uh, Emil in Ratatouille, and he played the role of the uh, pet collector in this film. So, so yeah. So I guess it was also very, he was very nervous when making the film because he would say that being in the director's chair, he'd realize he realized that, you know, he, being a director in such a big film made him realize what you're afraid of doing as well as what you're capable of doing. So, yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. So, what what do you think about the character of, of Arlo? I think it's an interesting character. I think it's neat to see a scared dinosaur. You know, it's always nice to see that kind of, like, I guess, playing the opposite somewhat. Kinda... I, I think he's a cute character. They make him very empathetic, where even though he's a coward, you still feel for him because he's like a kid, you know? So I think he's a very relatable character. And he, in that lack of strength at the beginning, gives him plenty of room to grow as a character throughout the film. So it just it, it, it keeps you interested in him throughout the entire length of the picture. Yeah, like, the biggest subject of this film is seems to be fear like how to deal with fear fear how fear plays into the psyche and how that uh how it's okay to be scared sometimes and all that kind of stuff uh like the characters of like the character of of butch who was sam elliott's character uh who told arlo that he was bitten in the face by a crocodile and when he fought back and he fought back, and he was like, whoa, you must be super not afraid of anything. He's like, no, dude, I was super scared. And if you're not scared, then, then something's wrong with you. So, because fear is, like, uh, one of the core basic human emotions. Well, in this in this case, it's a dinosaur emotion, like a sentient uh, being emotion. Uh, and then we also have the characters of uh, the pterodactyl characters with the who is the strange storm cult who who go who go he goes around saying like ah, i'm not afraid of anything ah and he's like and then you see like how strange that really is yeah yeah so what do you think about the the relationship between arlo and spot Yeah, uh, because the thing about, like, Spot is that Arlo blames Spot for the death of his father, which is kind of a very difficult thing for to be redeemed in a character's eyes. Do you think they were able to do that well? Yeah, and then he's like being, and then uh, Arlo is swept away by the current like twice, and then he's like, "Water, you killed my father! Die!" And he tries to attack the water. Am I right? Um, I don't remember that. Okay, he gets swept by the water like twice. Oh yeah, I remember that. Okay, so another thing: Do you think Henry, who's the father, is a good dad? Trying to encourage him to be stronger, but I think even Henry realized that he was being too hard on Arlo, and ultimately was a good father figure. 
Yeah, because I know that I can see where he's getting at because in the he was trying to teach Arlo that the world is a very uh, scary place and there's no way you're going to survive in it if you're always scared of it. So and th that was something that he was trying to teach. And... And, uh, but then again, you probably, if, it, it was, it's very obvious that this character, the character of Arlo was not capable of killing another living thing. So I don't know why he gave him that option right off the bat. Because I could tell that he was, it was, he, he didn't have it in him at that point in time. I would have said probably just have him catch it. And I think that was, that would be enough and you kill it yourself. Yeah, I think that would have been better, but then again, the, the film wouldn't have... There would be no reason for him to go out and be killed by the water if if that were to happen. Yeah. So, I guess it kind of needed to happen. So, then th there was this whole uh, thing about this film, as I said earlier, about the alternate reality, the alternate history aspect of it. Um, that, like, what would happen if... if the, the the dinosaurs live throughout the 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 meteorite or whatever. Do do you think that did you catch that in your viewing that that was probably like the the main setting of the film? I, I didn't catch that. I, I didn't really get why there was a meteor at the beginning. Yeah, ex exactly. That that's another thing that kind of like that that was one of my issues of the film. Like I know the because the. The biggest thing about the film was that it would it was supposed to be like what if uh what if uh dinosaurs lived continue to live and aside with humans but that didn't really that wasn't the core of the film the core of the film was this kid getting home so I felt a little bit misled uh when I was watch when I was watching this film uh what did you think about uh, Arlo's siblings in this film? I mean, I like them. They're not very big characters, I'd say. Yeah. I agree. Um, though I do think that his brother was kind of a jerk to him. Yeah, I mean, he acted like a brother. That's <laughs> the way I see it. Okay. Uh, and what's your opinion on the, uh, the, the storm cult? Yeah, the the pterodactyls. I mean, I think they were pretty good bad guys. They were interesting antagonists, so I thought I thought they were well placed. Yeah. Uh, another thing is like these the is the Tyrannosaurus Rex characters. Uh, those characters. I know that the the reason why it was supposed to be that they were supposed to be cattle herders. That's what they were supposed to be. Um, and they kind of were, in a sense, but it was supposed to play into this old alternate history thing that carnivores are supposed to be, like, cattle ranchers and 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 herbivores are supposed to be farmers. But, uh, and you you would see that it, that whenever the, the, dino, the Tyrannosaurus would run, they would kind of, like, gallop, like, horses, and that's what their run cycle was. Um... And there was this one. There was this one scene where uh, Sam Elliott's character Butch was said "hia" to to go to run, and I don't know why he said. Well, who was he saying "hia" to? Like his legs to go "hia." I don't know. Yeah, I know because I think it's supposed to be that he was supposed to be on a horse, and he said "hia, go legs." And so it was kind of strange, strange to me. There were some things that were kind of not fully thought out in in terms of this film but uh then there was the whole like father and son reconcil reconciliation scene what did you think of that scene i thought it was a nice scene i i think it was a nice kind of cathartic dream that gave arlo the strength to do what he needed to do so i thought it was a, a good moment yeah do you think it was okay that they they had the reconciliation of the father and son, even though the father was dead, and they couldn't meet up physically. Yeah, because I mean, this is more for Arlo's sake than his father's, so I think I think it was fine. Yeah, 
And then there was this, the one of the biggest scenes of the film is when he had to say goodbye to Spot. What did you think of that scene? Oh, I thought it was pretty sad. I, I did find it a little confusing, because are, are we to believe that Spot is getting adopted by this new group of people, or is this his family? Like, because they didn't really look like him, so I, I did find it a tad bit confusing. I feel like they could have been a little bit more a little bit more explaining there. Yeah, I don't think it's his family because in one of the scenes, Spot indicates that his parents are dead. And, uh, but I do find it odd that that the, this family wants to adopt this kid they've never seen before. So, it's kind of strange to me. Yeah, me too. And... And the and and uh, they all had gray hair and they were wearing makeup for some reason, and the, the daughter looked like a smaller version of the mom, like the character model looked exactly the same. Yeah. Uh, so, I don't know when like when I know that it the Arlo had to say goodbye to Spot. That was one of the things that would complete his character arc. That's something that he would like completely show his selflessness to his friend, like his him saying like, "Okay, I I I love you so much, I can let you go" type thing. But it could have been a bit better instead of just having like kind of like shooing him away to this random family, because like after, because I think. Spot was attracted to the family because he hasn't seen another human in so long, so he just wanted to go and see them out of curiosity. And once they find he finally like looked at him, and she and the mom was touching his face strangely, like pretty creepily. After that, he was like, Okay, I'm going back on Arlo's back and I'm ready to continue our journey with him. But Arlo was like, No, you stay here with this random family you just met. Yes, I think that's what what they had to do in terms of the story. Uh, yeah. So, do you, what did you think? Because a lot of issues that this film, a lot of people had with this film was that it didn't live up to Pixar's standard. That maybe if it was done by a different company, it would have people would have liked it more. But the, but in the sense that it was Pixar, people kind of judged it a bit more harshly. really original, very interesting sorts of films. So very, like, you know, you have Toy Story and Wally e and uh, Monsters, and, you know, these are these very original, unique stories that have kind of shook up the otherwise kind of, you know, you know, it shakes up the, the film industry itself in regard to, like, new thinking and new ideas, like, oh my goodness, we never thought about this being an idea for a story before. And there is a high standard to live up to in that. So I do think that it does fall on the more, I suppose on the lower end of the spectrum when it comes to Pixar movies. But I don't think it's a bad movie, but I can see where people are coming from because it does, it does feel a tad bit um, formulaic in regard to it, but I don't think that necessarily makes it a bad movie. Yeah, I completely agree. Uh, there are some things in the story that kind of made it a bit, kind of a bit choppy at, at times. Like again, with the fact that uh, Arlo gets there, he gets he gets swept, somebody gets swept away by water twice, um, and then there's the the scene like the second act, which is pretty slow, which is just Arlo and Spot just meandering around in the woods. Uh, so. Another thing, like, why do you think Spot was so attracted to Arlo? Because he was trying to steal his food, and now he's trying to. And when he when he 
sees Arlo like trying like building a house. He wants to help him. Why why do you think that is? Uh, that's another thing, like the fact that he's a dog, like a dog like, it's kind of odd. Like, the fact that Spot is panting sometimes, and the reason why dogs pant is to keep themselves cool because they don't have any sweat glands. And I, and so whenever I see Spot panting with his tongue out, I'm like, why are you pant? Why you don't need to pant? You you can sweat. That's how you keep cool. But I guess they have to make it more make a dog as dog like as possible i honestly don't think you're supposed to think that hard about it yeah uh, my brains but what did, what did you think about the scene where they eat the berries and then they get high well i think that part was a little bit too adult for a kid's film like i know that in many children's films they add in little jokes for you know the adults but this seems a bit too overt for a kid's film, in my opinion. Really? How so? Well, I mean, it, it raises a lot of questions. I don't think many parents in the audience enjoyed having to explain to their kids why the dinosaur and the kid were acting like that. Yeah. Uh, I, I think they could have cut that scene out because there was really no other purpose to it. They, you could have cut it out and nothing would have changed. Yeah. And so then there's this uh, um, scene with the snake where Arlo, where Spot is trying to s save Arlo from the snake, and then he saves him. And I think it's supposed to solidify that, you know, more that loyalty thing between the two, because Spot is trying. It was, it was supposed to solidify that Spot is trying to protect Arlo, and that's when you first see the snake. But the, yeah. the, I think the reason why I thought of the snake it was because I saw that it had hands and feet, and that kind of stuck out to me. Yeah, I think it maybe was supposed to insinuate that maybe it had quote unquote evolved yes to a regular snake, something like that. That's what I was thinking too. So that was kind of interesting to me. Uh, so out of all the little like, what did you think of the second act of the film? Yeah, cause I yeah, cause I like to see like Arlo, how Arlo interacts and reacts to different situations and different people or characters, uh, especially the scene with where he meets the Tyrannosaurus Rex, Rex characters, and he finally learns like his bit of. He, that's when he first we first see him start to grow as a character when he like starts to have this bit of courage trying to like fight off these velociraptor type like poacher type creatures and that's when we uh that's when he finally like grows a bit so what did you, what also did you think about henry's death did you think henry had to die Yeah, um, there's this also this whole 
symbolism of the film with taking steps and feet and stuff like the like arlo's first obstacle to overcome was to take his first step outside of his egg and we first see uh shots of henry walking down the farm and then again we see arlo walking down towards the farm in the that upward like angle this symbolized that he is a changed person and they have this whole thing on the on the silo where they make their mark with their footprints what do you think yeah. of the idea of the the feet and the and taking steps have in this film like what's their role well i'm guessing it's probably alluding back to that whole idea of the journey which is what we see Arlo take throughout this movie, like he's taking a journey both physically and like psychologically. So yeah. it's probably hunting back to that, I think. Yeah. Like I really do enjoy Odysseys, like Journeys Home. I I really like those types of films and those types of stories. Because it yeah. could definitely it could show like how much a character wants like what what lengths that a character would go to in order to make it home. To make it to their place like the place where they believe that is like their where they belong. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So, like, what is your final thoughts on this film? I mean, I, I think it's a good movie. It's worth watching. I will say it's a little bit more intense than most kids' movies I've seen. It should probably be rated PG instead of G, in it my is, opinion. It is rated PG. Because I think it's a bit too intense for younger kids. But I think old. But I think uh, like. For older kids and families with older kids, like, it could be, it, it's a pretty good watch, I'd say. Yeah, it actually is rated PG. Oh, it is rated PG? Okay, well, then rightly so. Yeah, so, yeah, I completely agree. I think it's a pretty good film. I think it's pretty underrated. It has a bit of a bad rep. It's nowhere near as bad as Cars 2. It's not at that level. It's pretty, <laughs> it's still pretty good. Um, yeah. Watch it for the animation, if nothing else. Because the animation yeah, the is hard. stunning, and so what was what would your rating be? Um, out of ten, I'd probably give it a six. Okay, I'd give it a seven, because I think it is a pretty good film, but it's definitely not a great film. It's an okay film. Yeah. All right, so that is it. Uh, that is the good dinosaur for you. All right. So, bye. Bye. Bye.